Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at question 2976. Minimum cost to convert string 1. The way we'll be solving this problem is basically by looking at all of the distances that we have between original and change and populating them in a 2D array. And the 2D array that we'll be initializing is basically um, a 2D array of 26 by 26, which basically means that we'll be mapping the distance between every single character so from a to um a, from a all the way from a to z and from uh, and the other way around as well so once we populate uh the distances between original and changed what we will be doing is we'll iterate through every single character and try to see if this character is used to jump between a to b will the distance become shorter so for example uh, in this case, we have uh, C to E and e, uh, e to B, right? So there's a character jump of like E in it. So we'll be placing every single character between uh, two given characters to see if uh, that shortens the distance between them. And that will give us the shortest di distance between every single character, including the jumps. And then we'll basically look at the, the source and then the target and calculate um, the distance it does, uh, the shortest distance between them by looking at the 2D array. Um, so let's get started. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind um, is that because we'll be adding integers, uh, there's a possibility that it will cross the bounds of the maximum integer that we see. So we'll be actually initializing that to be um, a long 2D array. And then let's call it distance uh, new long of 26 and 26 and because we need to be comparing distance the shortest distance between them and we need to um, keep updating it for the shortest distance we'll be initializing every single uh, cell in the matrix with the maximum integer value so um, so for int uh, sorry long d in distance Arrays dot fill the distance and integer dot mac underscore value. Awesome. Uh, once we have that, um, we can basically update the 2D array for the distances between original and change. So let's do that. Um, let's get the size. Uh, of original uh, original dot length so for and we want to make sure that the size of original and the change will always be the same uh, oh uh, yeah so basically this is saying that these values the original value and the change value will always be different which basically means you won't have a distance between a and a is like let's say anything greater than zero um, and also the length between the original and change will be the same. So you don't really have to check if the length between those two character areas will be different. So for int i equals zero, i less than, and in this case, increment i. So character one would be equal to origin original. Um, character at i minus a so basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get like the ascii value so every single character uh, in um, is assigned an ascii value and if you look it up uh, it becomes obvious so here when we subtract um, a from any character it's coming it's basically resetting every letter ascii value starting from zero so if we get a here and we subtract a from it it becomes zero b becomes one c becomes Two, that way we can get all of the indexes from 0 to 25, which will fit in our array. Uh, let's do the same for this character 2, and this will be taken from uh, changed. And then um, it becomes distance between 
Factor 1, factor 2 is basically the minimum uh, between this um, and the cost itself. Uh, cost of I. Um, yeah, okay, so basically the original the change and the, the cost length will be the same, so we don't have to verify if the size of them is the same, so we know for sure that I will be... Um, an expected index, not like out of bounds or something like that. Awesome. Um, next up, we basically have to do step two, which is basically calculate the shortest distance between every character by checking if adding a character between them makes the distance shorter. So basically adding a jump character. So let's say, so let's say um, int uh, k equals zero, um, k less than 26, uh, k plus plus, and then we'll iterate through all of the characters. I equals zero. Um, I less than twenty six. I plus plus, and then for int j equals zero. J less than twenty six. Uh, j plus plus. Awesome. Um. So basically, it'll be the calculating the minimum distance between them again. So character, but the distance between i and j will be the minimum between the, the current distance that it has and the, the distance between i, i and k and k plus j. So basically what this is saying is that, okay, look for, give me the minimum distance and we calculate the minimum distance between looking at the existing value for that and looking at, okay, if we can add the character k in between them, will that give us a shorter distance? So that is um, calculating the minimum distance. Um, I wonder if that looks a little weird. Let's indent this to make it cleaner. Uh, okay, awesome. And then let's clean this out, sorry. Okay, that looks good. Um, okay, so now we have all of the numbers that we care about stored in the 2D array. The next thing we actually need um, is to calculate, um, okay, it's to go from source to target. So let's just copy this over, use this as like a, like a skeleton for int i um, equals zero, i less than, so we basically need to get the length of the source. So let's get it here. So int l equals source source dot length and then we'll just change this to l so character one will be since it's not like a character array you need to extract it by using character at i uh, you need to do the same for the target as well the other thing I want to check while we're at it is whether the length of source and target are the same. Let's check that. Yes, okay, the length between the source and, uh, and the target will be the same, so we don't have to verify, oh, are they the same? Um, okay, so what's next? Um, we need to check if the characters are the same, so if character one is equal to character two basically we don't really have to do anything so we'll just continue with the next iteration so we'll just do continue if not uh you basically um you're returning along okay so we need to initialize um the result as well uh let's initialize it here long result equals zero here it becomes result plus equals um, yeah so it basically will be distance between character one and character two uh, before I forget uh, there is also a possibility that uh, it's not possible to go from A to, so from character A to character B, so we need to add that check as well. So if distance of character one and character two, uh, sorry. 
if it is equal to the max value that we have set basically that means it hasn't changed which means that there is no way to actually go between uh, like a a and b so if this is true you would just return minus one because that is what the question requires uh is is that what we return yeah okay so we return minus one if not we add that to the result and then in the end we return result i think that is all we need let's try compiling this Ooh. Uh, I think it's two more than what we need. Um, and what are the other test cases that are failing? Um, hmm. And then every single distance between them um, I wonder if actually adding all of the distances like right here at some point would be greater than the max in so if the given distance is greater than are equal to max and I don't think yeah so basically if th there is no possibility of reaching two given characters uh, it would be greater than integer dot max value and that doesn't solve it either okay so let's see where we went wrong how is this it okay okay wait let's try that again yeah okay so that was a problem classic mistake okay um all right so let's try running out the other test cases okay that's awesome um i think this should be equals i don't think there should be any given case where it's more than yeah because it's always taking the minimum yeah okay so it's like yeah either way that greater than or equal to integer max should be fine Awesome. If you have any questions about this problem, please let me know in the comments below. Oh, we didn't talk about this based on the time complexity. Um, okay, so the time complexity is actually of n plus m. And the reason why is because even though we iterate through this um, three-layer for loop, it is of the order 0, 26 to the power of 3, right? But this number will remain constant for every single problem that we solve therefore this becomes zero um o, big o of one so this basically it runs in constant time so we don't really care about that but you need to, you care about this for loop and this for loop uh like if we used m here so it becomes n plus m so that's the time complexity and the space complexity is o of one since we're using only constant space here and it doesn't grow based on uh, any of the inputs that are given to us Awesome. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I really appreciate that. It keeps me motivated to make more videos. Thanks so much.